this is what I was trying to tell Frank and Dr. Martin at the Don Juan's restaurant during Saturday's break at the Constitution Boot Camp. So it's uh, Mike Rogers is the real hero in this whole Clinton Trump election craziness. A false crime that this is what they have been forced to do. Um, one of the heroes in this entire story is Admiral Mike Rogers, the head of the National Security Agency. He became the head of the National Security Agency in 2014. In 2015, uh, one of the auditors at the National Security Agency, our electronic surveillance SIGINT masterpiece from World War II, came to him and said, there's some funny things going on at the FBI with regard to 702, which of course is that part of the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, which allows the scooping up of huge amounts of phone call data and uh, emails and electronic data about foreigners. And in the course of that, allows the incidental collection of information about Americans, uh, which is supposed to be kept secret. Uh, but wasn't in this case because of the conduct of the FBI and the Obama administration Justice Department officials. Mike Rogers says, okay, let's do an audit. He does this in March of 2016. This is way in advance of the election. He then discovers as a result of the audit that the FBI has been sharing this secret data about Americans with not other government agencies, but private contractors. Some of those contractors apparently work for the Democratic National Committee. Some of them work for Fusion GPS. Mr. Rogers, Admiral Rogers, says, okay, uh, the court, the Fisk Court, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, has been lied to. They have not been told about this. And things have been told to them which are not true. He said, I'm going to the court. I'm going to tell the court. Rogers goes to the court on his own and informs the court about these problems. Now, prior to him being able to do that, the Justice Department and the FBI learn about what he's done, about the audit and what he's discovered. And so they go to the court first to inform the court that they have discovered these problems with illegal activity. It doesn't make any difference. It's too late. The court now knows what has happened. So he goes to the court, they go to the court, and then in April of 2016, the FISA court issues this 99-page opinion, which I'll bet you didn't even know about until I talked about it this morning. Uh, this opinion describes illegal activity by the FBI, illegal activity by contractors, and it calls it the Ill improper disclosure of raw intelligence about Americans to unauthorized individuals. All of those things that the Bureau did and the contractors were crimes. Now, you wouldn't think, this is a public document now. It's been declassified. You have not seen a single story about this in the Washington Post or the New York Times. So. With this in hand, and remember, uh, uh, Rogers knows all about this before the election. So as soon as the election is held, um, Rogers determined, determines that since there is now a president-elect who has been spied upon, he knows that Trump was the subject of a plot. So Admiral Rogers goes to visit President Trump. President-elect Trump in New York in November of 2016, on the 17th of November. He's the head of the NSA. He briefs the president. And it is after that briefing, the very next day, that President-elect Trump moves his entire staff out of Trump Tower to Bedminster, New Jersey, where his golf club is. And that's where the transition team stays until Trump Tower is debugged. What Admiral Rogers did was, and this is why the president said that President Obama had wiretapped him. Rogers, on that day, November 17th, briefed the president 
about the illegal activities which had been reported to the, to the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court, Court earlier in the year. And the President knew what had happened at that point. Now, interestingly enough, when the outgoing administration found that Admiral Rogers had gone to New York, the DNI, the Director of National Intelligence, John Clapper, and John Brennan, the Director of the Central Intelligence Agency, asked President Obama to fire Admiral Rogers. Now, President Obama had many flaws, but he ain't no dummy. And he said, boys, it's too late. I'm not going to fire Admiral Rogers, because if I do, that'll be the only story about my last days in office, so you can forget it. And Rogers is there to this day. And when this story is written, when it's all over, the great hero will not be Robert Mueller, this, this crazy man that has been made the special counsel. It won't be the people on the Hill, except for Devin Nunes, who is a real hero, who has stood up under the most incredible personal attacks from real sleazeballs like Adam Schiff, this, this loony congressman from California. And it, it will be shown that Admiral Rogers uh, saved the day by, by forcing the senior Justice Department officials to, to admit that they had done wrong things. Now, there's another fascinating part of this story. In October of 2016, when Admiral Rogers is going to the court and forcing the Justice Department to advise the court that they had submitted false documents, that they, the DOJ, had submitted, unwittingly, had submitted false documents, as they say. Um, Admiral Rogers, uh, is plans are being made to fire him at that point, which, of course, never go forward because of what he does by going to New York. Um, all of this has come to a head at that point, and the court is now learning for the first time about this unbelievable activity for the first time in the history of the FISA court. It has been lied to, and according to the court, systematically and ongoing violations of the law. This is stunning stuff, uh, and it's all because of Admiral Rogers. And that's where we are today. We are now at the point where Nunes has discovered this, discovered it back in March when he went to the White House and all of these documents were turned over to him by the incoming National Security Council staff. Uh, and so now we'll, we'll watch it play out. By the way, in October of 2016, the Assistant Attorney General in charge of the National Security Division at Justice for the Obama administration and the person who was responsible for signing the pleadings that went to the court was a fellow named John Carlin. Once this material was submitted to the court in October of 2016, revealing the violations of the law, Carlin resigned and has not been heard from since. No one could figure out why Carlin resigned. And I, I don't know why he resigned. There was plenty of time left in the administration. He just left. Uh, now, it may have been that you resigned because you don't want to be questioned by the inspector general, who at that point had already begun an investigation of the FBI and the DOJ senior people based on Admiral Rogers' complaints. So that's another story that's going to play out. Where is John Carlin and what is he doing? How do you explain to people, Joe, who, who think that even if you talk about these things, you're a